aerial photography for intelligence. Can you establish terrain levels around this airfield? The old man wants the turning radius of this Jap carrier. What are the lengths of these ships at Cook? Please furnish the plan and elevation for this German radar station. Forward a recognition silhouette of this ship. A layout of this Jap factory is needed. These are some of the many questions which an operations intelligence officer has to answer. Here is a single oblique photo of a bauxite pier in the Palau group. This is the only coverage available. The operations officer needs to know the height of the pier above low water. How many LSTs can be docked alongside? The length of the pier from shore and the height of the cable towers and warehouse building. There is a bridge spanning the solid sections of this pier. The Japs will probably destroy it when they retreat. The intelligence officer needs to know the span of this bridge. Not then, but now. Prefabricated sections must be prepared in advance. Up to the present time, it has only been possible to make an intelligent estimate of these things. The iconoscope, however, mechanically and accurately extracts this information from the oblique photo. Here is a plan of the bauxite pier drawn to scale. It shows the width of the slab opening. It shows the length and width of the pier and the height of the pier above low water. The height of the warehouse building and low flying obstructions, in fact, everything intelligence wants to know about this particular installation. In order to project a true plan on the drawing board, the tip and tilt of the iconoscope must be the same as that of the camera at the time the original photo was taken. This tip and tilt can be determined from the photo itself in several ways. In the case of the Palau Pier, lines of position were used. We know the corner of this warehouse building is vertical. Therefore, a line extended through it may be said to be a vertical axis. We also know that the edge of the pier is horizontal. By extending this line, we have a horizontal axis. Similarly, we can establish another horizontal axis perpendicular to the first one. If the original negative is not available for use as a transparency, an acetate tracing may be made over a print. The print used, however, must be the same size as the original negative. The collimation marks of the photo are noted. Great care and precision must be exercised in making this tracing since the accuracy of the projection is directly proportional to the accuracy of the tracing. The three axis lines are etched onto the acetate, and the overall length of this jet barge at waterline is also etched on. This barge is of known length and will later be used to establish the scale of the plan. Trace all the main lines of the photograph. When placing the finished acetate tracing in the film holder, the etched surface should face inside. The collimation mark at the bottom of the tracing must line up with a notch in the holder. Attach the top edge of the tracing and draw up on the tension screws until the side collimation marks 
are in line with the side markers. Adjust the focal length of the iconoscope to that of the camera which took the oblique photo. The focal length of the iconoscope is indicated on these calibrated arms. In this case, we want six and three-eighths inches. Insert the point source light bulb. This will later project the image from the acetate tracing to the drawing board. Before we use the iconoscope to reconstruct this plan, let's see diagrammatically how and why it works. Here is a pier, its buildings, and an aerial camera taking an oblique photo. A light ray leaves the corner of the warehouse, passes through the lens, and records on the negative. Rotating the camera 180 degrees about the nodal point of the lens, we find that the image of the warehouse lies along the same light ray whether the film is in front of the lens or behind it. If we substitute a point source of light for the camera lens, a transparency of the oblique photo for the negative, and a drawing board for the level of the pier, we have an iconoscope. The iconoscope must be adjusted to the same focal length as the original camera. When the iconoscope is turned on, a light ray projects the image from the transparency to the drawing board to exactly the same position from which it originally came, creating the same image on the drawing board that existed on the pier. Now let's take a point in space, like the top of the warehouse building. When the picture is taken, the image falls on the film here. The iconoscope directs the image back to the drawing board. If we erect a vertical scale at the plan location of the pier building, the height of the building will be projected on the scale. By moving the vertical scale from place to place on the drawing board, heights of all pier installations may be read directly on the vertical scale. A pair of perpendicular lines on the drawing board and this vertical line represent the true position of the three axis lines which were etched on the acetate. To set the iconoscope with the same tip and tilt that the camera had at the time the oblique photo was taken, the projected axis lines of the acetate must be made to coincide with these three lines. Now let's darken the room. Whenever possible, select a scale object near the center of the photograph, as this portion of the photo will have less distortion due to lens aberrations. By tipping the iconoscope, the projected vertical axis can be made to coincide with the vertical line. Tilting the iconoscope up will bring the two horizontal axes into coincidence as well. With all three axes in coincidence, the iconoscope has the same relation to the drawing board that the camera had to the Palau Pier when the oblique photo was taken. Since the horizontal axis lines on the oblique photo were established at pier level, and since the projected axis lines lie on the drawing board, the drawing board may be said to be at pier level. Therefore, anything at pier level, such as the outline of the pier itself, may now be traced in its true plan on the drawing board. To establish the true plan of anything at water level, for instance, the breakwater, it is necessary to lower the drawing board from pier level to water level. 
Instead of actually lowering the drawing board, however, the same result can be accomplished by raising the iconoscope. We know that in true plan, the top edge of the dock and the waterline of the dock are directly over each other. Therefore, in going from dock level to water level, simply raise the iconoscope until the water level line reaches the top edge of the dock which we have drawn. Just to be sure we understand, let's do it again. Dock level, water level. Now we can trace the breakwater. Also, we can mark the length of the Jap barge at water level. We know that this type of barge is 50 feet long. Its projection on the drawing board, therefore, establishes the scale of the plan on the drawing board. To make a vertical measurement, simply set the same fully calibrated scale upright at the plan position of the object to be measured. The image of the object falls on the scale at its true height. Here is the height of the dock. To measure the height of the warehouse, it is first necessary to go back to dock level. We can see that the warehouse is 30 feet high. No matter where the scale is placed on the perimeter of the building, the height on the scale remains constant. Here is the cable tower height. Now we are able to furnish intelligence with data on low level flying obstructions. If we go from dock level to roof level, we can complete the plan of our warehouse. It is possible to draw a plan at any level so long as the drawing board is brought into the proper plane. Thus we see how a complete plan can be produced from a single oblique photo using lines of position to orient the iconoscope. In a similar manner, the silhouette of this enemy ship was produced, the plan and elevation of this German radar station projected, and a factory layout made from this captured Jap photo. If lines of position cannot be established on the oblique photo, another method can be used to orient the iconoscope. 